guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are here for a Will I Buy It. It has been quite a while since I have filmed a Will I Buy It, like almost two months now, I feel like. And that's because I am a pre-filmer. I really like to pre-film my videos. If I don't have at least like two to three videos edited, uploaded to YouTube, scheduled to go out on a certain day or time, it gets me very stressed out because I'm a teacher. So I don't really have an abundance amount of time to film and edit and upload and all that for you guys. I feel like if this was like my full-time gig, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be such a pre-filmer, but because I really only have the weekends to film, I like to have an abundance of videos just in case, if that makes any sense. But Will I Buy It's are hard for that because there are just new things launching all of the time. I can't really film this and then upload it like a week or two later because by that time, there'll be a million more things that have launched and it won't be like relevant or the new things. So that's why it's kind of hard for me to get up Will I Buy It's for you guys. Not that anyone asked for an explanation, but here I am. If you do not know what Will I Buy It's are, it was created by Samantha March probably like five years ago now and she puts up one every single week on her channel. She's awesome and just is always talking about the new releases. So I highly recommend you checking her out if you do not already follow her. I'm sure you do, but if you don't, I will have her link down below since she is a creator of this not tag, but video idea. And you basically go through the new launches that are coming out and you talk about them. If you like them, if you don't, if you're gonna buy them, all of the above. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm i not interested in a lot of this stuff. I Since I haven't done this for about two months or so, I kind of went back a little bit. There are some older launches now for me to talk about. I didn't go back too, too far, but I definitely went back a couple weeks. So sorry, they're not like the newest. There are some new ones, but there are some older ones too, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I'm just like not super interested in a lot of these. And I don't want this video to come off as negative per se, but I just really haven't been into buying too, too much makeup recently. The last like three months or so, I really slowed down and I haven't bought a ton. And I don't wanna make it sound negative, like I'm not interested in any of this makeup, but I'm not really interested in any of this makeup, so. So that is what we are here to do today. I'm gonna to talk about a whole bunch of new releases on Trend Mood 1. I will also have her Instagram page linked down below for you to check out if you do not follow her. She puts up all of the new releases and that's where I got all my images that I'm going to pop up here. Before I get started, don't forget I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for you guys. If you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help me out. And other than that, if you are excited and you want to hear, will I buy it for a bunch of new launches, then let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I went ahead and scooted over so I can pop up some pictures here for you guys. Also, I have some notes and my husband's phone to help me out. So if I'm looking down a lot, that is why. The first thing I wanna talk about isn't really a launch per se, but it's more beauty news. And that is that Danessa Myricks is going into Sephora. I am really, really excited for this. I personally have not tried anything from Danessa Myricks yet. I'm going to in the future, but a lot of my friends on Instagram use a bunch of her products and they just look so cool and innovative. She has a ton of cream products that are multi-use and they just seem like really awesome products that I definitely want to try in the future. It looks like it'll be available online on Sephora February 26th and then in stores April 9th. And I'm just, like I said, I'm really excited. I haven't gotten a chance to try this brand. Now that it's gonna be more accessible and maybe I'll be able to see it in person in Sephora to check out her products to see what I would want to purchase. I'll definitely give her a go in the future. And I just think this is awesome. Congrats to Danessa Myricks for this. This is a big step and I'm really excited for her. So the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit older of a release, but it is that Beauty Blender is making an addition to the Bounce Complexion line. They are releasing their Bounce Soft Focus Gemstone Setting Powder. This is supposed to be a silky setting powder that smooths and locks makeup in place for an airbrush finish without any caking and flashback. It cancels shine, absorbs oil, and keeps your glow and is also talc free. I don't know about shades or prices. I didn't see anything on there. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not super excited for this only because I tried out their like Bounce and Blur foundation, the one with like the innovative packaging where you had to like unlock it and it would like come out then I don't really know how to explain it. I just did not like that foundation at all, mainly because the packaging was terrible. It got everywhere. It would shoot out the foundation on my clothes and everything and I, I cannot tell you how many shirts I ruined because of that. But also I just really didn't like that foundation formula. I understand this is powder, so it's gonna be different, like foundation powder. They're completely different products and different formulations and all of that. 
but I feel like because I disliked the foundation so much that I'm not really going to be interested in trying this powder. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see what reviews are once it comes out. But as of right now, I'm not planning on picking it up. Next thing is the Marc Jacobs Spring 2021 collection. It is their cafe collection. So it's inspired by decadent swirls of cream and coffee. And now I love coffee. I love coffee, but uh, I'm not really interested in this line. I'm not going to lie. It has quite a few things. It has their Extra Shot Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. It's supposed to conceal and perfect. It's caffeine infused, creamy full coverage, long wear, crease resistant, natural looking, instantly conceals dark circles, blemishes, and redness. Well, then it says it's a biddable foundation for visibly smoother, more even complexion. But if it's already full coverage, why would it need to be buildable? That kind of confuses me a little little bit it's an oversized applicator for quick all over coverage blends seamlessly for skin that looks brighter and revived and re-energized so it looks like it's a concealer and foundation combined i think like an all-in-one sort of product that you can use for foundation and concealer i think i don't i don't know if i love that it's 39 dollars. i personally am just not someone that's going to only use one product and just use one thing for foundation and concealer i just am not i like to use both but um yeah i'm not really interested and actually i feel like samantha talked about this in one of her will i buy it's like a while ago because this released a while ago and she's on it and she talks about new releases like right when they release and i feel like i remember her saying that she's seen reviews and she hasn't seen like super positive reviews about it so i'm not sure about that also they are coming out with an omega times three powder blush and bronzer highlight powders these are palettes i'm sorry not powders these are it looks like 49 dollars, which makes sense that's the price point of their omega bronzers that come in that same component i just i don't like these i don't like that there's only two options i feel like both of them are pretty light so i feel like this wouldn't work for a lot of skin tones and i just personally don't like those three in one kind of things i'm not really a face palette kind of gal and these are just really skinny i feel like it would be hard to get your brush down in there which i've seen a lot of people saying and this i and i actually don't like the packaging i don't like the outside packaging it it doesn't look if i didn't know that this was like a cream and coffee kind of shtick kind of like packaging I, I wouldn't have guessed that it just looks dirty to me I don't know I'm just not interested in any of these things in this collection unfortunately oh, the next thing is the Naked Wild West palette <laughs> could you guess that Urban Decay was going to come out with another Naked palette here's the thing I actually genuinely like these colors I think they're beautiful I think that the colors are pretty they're nice and neutral but they do have a couple pops of like blue and I think it's really pretty I actually think if this wasn't marketed as a naked palette I would have been more intrigued to buy it it's $49 which is their normal naked palette prices but I just because it is marketed as yet another naked palette I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat as me I'm just over it I'm over the naked palette craze the naked palette packaging and, and all of that it's just kind of like shoved in our face which I agree I think Urban Decay is still making and producing naked palettes because I think they sell well I do to the average consumer I think these are very easy to use they are neutral but if you do want to have a couple pops of color it would be nice and I think for the average consumer who's not a makeup lover who has a ton of eyeshadows I think these are good for them and I think that's why Urban Decay keeps making them because they keep selling them and even though us as like beauty people who have a lot of makeup and see all the releases think like, okay, it's too much. Quit doing the naked palettes. You know what I mean? Um, they're still selling out. So I think that's why Urban Decay still does it. But I, I, I like the colors. And if it wasn't a naked palette, I would be interested in buying it. But because it is yet another naked palette, I, I don't want to buy it. And $49 is a lot. It'll probably go on sale though. So if you have your eyes on it, I would wait because I, it'll probably go on sale. All their other ones have in the past and I bet you this one will too. Then we have a new launch from Good Molecules. I really, really like their skincare brand. It is their BHA Clarifying Gel Cream. It looks like it is supposed to soothe irritated blemish blemish prone skin with the help of this weightless gel cream formulated with salicylic acid and centella. I don't know that word extract to help maintain a clear complexion. I love that this is only $10. I'm on Good Molecules PR list, so I tend to get most of their new launches. I don't ever get like a tracking email or anything like that. It just kind of shows up in my mailbox. So I think I will get this. I don't want to ever assume I will just have PR showing up to me, but I usually tend to get their products. 
So I'm excited to try this out. Even if they don't send it to me for $10, I really think that I would buy this anyways. I don't think I would purchase it right now just because it is a gel moisturizer and gels tend to be a little less moisturizing. So it'd be something that I'd want to use in the summertime and not really right now in the winter when my skin is dry. So it would definitely be a purchase I would make in the future, but they are a really great brand. I am affiliated with them if you ever wanna try them out. I always have a link down in my description for you to get money off. I do get a little kickback, but even if I wasn't an affiliate with them or didn't get their PR, I really like them as a brand. I have purchased many things on my own with my own money because they're just so good. They're affordable. They have good products. They have good ingredients. They work. I don't think salicylic acid really does anything for my skin personally, but I still would be interested in trying this out. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is another launch from Beauty Blender. It is their new Dream Swirl Blend and Cleanse Set. So it comes with a two-tone orange and white swirl design with a vegan cleanser that removes excess makeup, germs, and grime for all your tools for $20. I, okay, I don't know what Beauty Blender is going to keep doing because I feel like there's only so much you can do with sponges. I mean, I guess they're just going to have to keep releasing different colors of it. I don't really know. I do like that you get a set of the sponge and the cleanser, the, like the soap cleanser bar. I think that's awesome. And I think $20 is a good price point for that. I'm not going to pick it up right now because I don't need new sponges. And also I actually did just buy their like charcoal sponge cleaner. It's like a bar soap that they offer. And I really, really like that. I had a sample size of it from points from Sephora and I liked it so much that I bought a full size of it. So that's like fairly new to me. I just opened it about two weeks ago or so. So that's going to last for a while, but I think it's a good idea. I like the combo. If you're in the need for a new sponge and some cleaner, I think it's a great deal, but I just am not in the need for that right now. So I'm going to pass. Then we have kind of a new release from Tower 28. It's not a new product, but it's new shades. It is in their Beach Please Tinted Lip and Cheek Balm. It looks like it's they're coming out with three new shades. Uh, After Hours, which is a sun-kissed berry. Rush Hour, which is a sun-kissed peach. And then Power Hour, which is a sun-kissed terracotta. These look beautiful. I myself have not tried this formula yet, but I've heard so many amazing things from a bunch of people that I follow here on YouTube and my Instagram account who love these tinted blushes. And I'm really glad that they came out with these three new shades because they look like they're gonna be way better for deeper skin tones. The three original shades they had were pretty light. So I'm glad they expanded their shade range and now it can be better for deeper skin tones. I do like that. I am excited to try this product. I will eventually, I just haven't yet. But I'm not gonna lie, I wanna see something new from Tower 28. I feel like I haven't seen a new product from them in a while. I would love to see them get into powder products because they don't really have any powder products right now, it's all creams. Or I would like to see them get more into complexion products. They seem to be like a natural, dewy, easy, simple makeup line. And that is really popular right now. Just natural, dewy, glowy, easy, simple makeup that isn't too cakey, isn't too overdone is really popular right now. So I think this would be a really good time for them to release some sort of like concealer or tinted moisturizer or foundation or just something that fits their line that goes in with what's popular right now in makeup. I just, I really like this brand from what I've tried. I've tried the lip glosses in their SOS spray and I really wanna try these blushes and their bronzer at some point, but I just, I wanna see them come out with something new. Speaking of something new from a brand, we have a new launch from Huda. It is her, the Bomb Brows Micro Shade Brow Pencil. It is an ultra fine 0.9 millimeter tip retractable brow pencil that precisely defines shapes and fills your brows using a tiny hair-like strokes that give a micro blade worthy effects to create brows that look on point, literally. <laughs> That's cute. So it looks like it comes in eight different shades and they're only $17, which I feel like is a pretty fair price for a brow product. My whole thing is one, all the shades look pretty similar, which isn't inherently a bad thing because brow shades and brow colors, I feel like aren't really, how do I explain this? I feel like that's okay, that they kind of all look similar, but I also think it might just be like bad promo pics because it is such a little skinny brow pencil that the picture of it swatched on the arms, I'll pop it up here, they do all look very similar. I just think that those pictures maybe aren't the best because they are such like tiny thin lines. I think they did that to show off how skinny of a pencil it is, 
but then you can't really see the different shades, if that makes sense. I think this is a good drop from Huda. I think it's good that she's expanding her line and all of that. Do I think you necessarily need to buy this? Probably not, only because one, there's a ton of great drugstore brow products that are very similar to this that work just as well for a lot more affordable than even $17, which I don't think is that bad. And two, I think you can get higher end brow pencils on sale a lot of the times. So like the Benefit Precisely My Brow and then the ABH Brow Definer and Brow Wiz, they're always on sale for half off, which brings them down to like 10 something. So cheaper than this one. So I just don't think that this is necessarily something you would need to buy because you can get it cheaper at the drugstore or other high end ones on sale, if that makes sense. Then we have the Blockbuster palette. I don't really know what this is. <laughs> I guess this is trying to like feed into nostalgia of people around my age who used to go into Blockbuster, which I did. I used to go into Blockbuster fairly often and get DVDs and VHSs to watch, but I, I just, I'm not buying this. <laughs> First of all, I don't really like the shades at all. They just aren't shades that I would wear. And I haven't heard anyone talking about Hot Topic makeup. Is it good? I have no idea. Maybe everyone's just sleeping on it and this is like a bomb formula. I don't know. And it is on sale for $13.52 which is kind of a weird price, $13.52. But yeah, no, not, not buying this. <laughs> Another thing that I feel like is trying to just breed off nostalgia is the ColourPop Bambi collection. Okay, I, I'm just kind of over ColourPop's collections, I'm not gonna lie, but I do think that this is a pretty cute collection. Not really anything I'm interested in purchasing, but it's pretty cute. You have three five pan eyeshadow palettes. You have Bambi, Flower, and Thumper. So actually, I was really excited to see the Flower one, which is the purple one, because I am still on the hunt for like my perfect purple palette. This isn't it, but I get excited whenever I see brands coming out with purple palettes because I'm like, okay, the more that release, I feel like one day, one of these days, I'm gonna just fall in love with one of the purple palettes and then just immediately buy it and be so, so happy and excited. It also looks like it comes with three eyeliners, three luxe lip glosses, a pixie poof highlighter and morning light and oh dear faux lashes. I'm actually excited they're including lashes, not because I wear faux lashes, but because I think it's nice when they come out with a collection that's different. I feel like a lot of the times we see the same things. An eyeshadow palette, some lip glosses, some blushes, maybe a highlighter, and that's kind of it. So it's nice that they threw in something different for this collection. But yeah, I'm just not really interested in this collection. It's cutesy, but I just pass. <laughs> Then we have Bite Beauty. They released their new, uh, the Upswing Extreme Longwear Liquid Eyeliner. It is clean, vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. Passion Flower Extracts helps nourish so the eyeliner doesn't flake or dry out. It stays in control with the super precise stress-free application. Ultra pigmented jet black color, fade and smudge resistance, extreme long wear, and it's only $25. I actually am kind of interested in this. I don't need a new black liner right now, so it wouldn't be something that I would pick up now, but maybe in the future. I do agree that from the promo pictures, the tip does look very tiny and precise, which is very, very nice, especially for someone like myself where I have small eyes. So when I do eyeliner, I have to be really careful to make sure the line is very thin or else it just takes over my whole eye and then you can't see any of the eyeshadow and then I'm just eyeliner because my eyes are so small so that does seem like something that would be good for someone like me and it does it does look pigmented I don't know how you can really tell in a picture that something's going to be pigmented but I thought that when I saw the picture so this isn't something that I would be interested in buying right now but maybe in the future next up we have a limited edition sunsetter face palette by Becca it looks like it comes in four different Oh, no, I was gonna say, I thought it came in four different variations, but it's just t telling the four different shades in the palette. So we have Escapist, Calypso Coral, Vava Bloom, and Gold Trotter. It's $39. Okay, this would not work for every skin tone. And also, is Becca gonna ever do anything new? <laughs> this just looks like every other palette that Becca has ever released. And I just... I don't know, man. I'm just not interested in it. I'm really not. It also says that it's available online at Nordstrom. So I'm wondering if it's only available at Nordstrom or if it's going to be in Sephora and Ulta and all that. But like, I'm just, it's like the same old, same old from Becca. And I'm just really not interested. Only a few more and then we're done. The next one is the new Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. 
<laughs> so this is a perfecting translucent powder with a blurring effect. It's matte with a natural radiant finish and a long wear. It's supposed to, oh, it's a transparent gel base that is fused with the soft focus pigments. So it's supposed to give you like a no powdery look. You can use it as a finishing powder after liquid or cream foundation or as highlights and bronzers, depending on the shade in your natural skin tone. Okay, so it comes in 10 shades, it's $40. I guess I actually hadn't read that whole thing because on my notes I wrote down that I wish they would have just released this as like a bronzer. I know they have their bronzer and highlighter palettes and I was hoping that this would just be like a bronzer on its own, but I guess it's a powder, I don't know. I would maybe be interested in buying it because it looks like something that could be what I wanted the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter, not Flawless Filter, Flawless Powder to be and it just didn't live up to the hype for me. So maybe this would be something good, especially since I am having drier skin recently, this would be a nice powder to use to set my face, but not be drying if that makes sense. But then whenever I hear powders like that, I'm like, oh, would it really set my face as well as I need it to for it to like not move around all day? So I'm gonna wait and see what reviews say about this, but as of right now, I'm not gonna pick it up, especially for $40. We have a new mascara from Benefit Cosmetics. It is their, their real magnet extreme lengthening mascara so it's developed with real magnetic technology for a powerful length and lift it is supposed to wear for 36 hours i don't know who's wearing their mascara for 36 hours but it's supposed to give you 40 percent longer lashes it's a lightweight buildable formula it won't smudge or flake uh the full size is 27 and the mini is 15. i really enjoy that they came out with a mini so in case you want to try it you don't have to like purchase in the full size so I've seen a lot of people talking about the magnets in here and how it's supposed to have like a magnetically charged core that's supposed to give you extreme like lift and length. And I, I saw a lot of people talking about how that isn't really going to be good for your eyes to have magnets, magnets so close to your eyes, which I agree with. But then again, there's a ton of liners out there that supposedly have magnets in it to magnetize lashes onto your eyes. So like what's the difference between having it on your eyeliner and not your ma mascara? You know what I mean? So... Do I think it's weird that any sort of eye product has magnets in it? Yeah, probably, but I don't think this would be any worse for your eyes than those liners, if that makes sense. Do I think this is probably gimmicky? Yeah, I probably do. I think that this is probably gonna be really similar to their other Their Real Mascara, which I've tried in the past and didn't love. So uh, I'm not gonna be purchasing this, but I think it's cool that they're trying to be innovative, but it just is a little gimmicky. Okay, and the last product I wanna talk about is the new Tatcha The Silk Powder. So this is, in addition to their Silk family, it is supposed to be a protective talc-free setting powder that blurs pores, shields from pollution and blue light, and provides a translucent soft radiant finish, all for $48. So I'm intrigued, I am. I did not like their original Silk canvas primer like the putty one in the jar or whatever but i do kind of like the liquid version i have little minis that i got with sephora points so i think it's nice that they are expanding this line do i want to buy a 48 dollar powder no no i don't but it's supposed to help maintain healthy moisture balance for a visibly smoother more radiant skin helps makeup last longer blurs and looks and reduces the look of pores and all of that so i feel like this would be a good powder for my dry skin it kind of i don't know why it's kind of reminding me of what the hourglass veil translucent powder would be it's 48 dollars though which is a lot of money it's another one that i'm like is it really gonna set my face well if it really is that lightweight of a powder is it really gonna set my face well you know what i mean i'm excited that they're expanding this line and i would really like to see a setting spray from this line next i know they have their like luminous dewy setting mist that is like super luminous but i wouldn't mind seeing a setting spray in this line next but yeah i'm gonna wait for reviews to see what people think of that powder before i run out and buy it and that was it you guys that was my thoughts on a bunch of releases some of them are new some of them are a little bit older that i just wanted to talk about because i haven't done one of these videos in a while i don't know when i'm going to do another one i felt like when i started my page i wanted this to be something that i do at least every like week or two but that's just not feasible for me right now with my uploading schedule maybe I can do it more often in the summer when I'm you know filming during the week and stuff but I hope you enjoy these videos when I do put them out I hope you enjoy hearing my thought process behind if I'm gonna purchase something or not obviously take my opinions with a grain of salt if some of these launches you saw and you were like wow I need that powder I need that eyeshadow I need that liquid liner just 
you know, take my opinions with a grain of salt. Everyone's different. And I just really have been a little bit more critical about makeup recently in the last couple of months anyways. So don't take it too seriously. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.